My Journey of Faith Radio with your host, Vicki Pets Henderson, physician, writer, speaker, encourager, and lover of God's Word. My Journey of Faith is a place to inspire, equip, and encourage women in their personal walks with Christ. Here's your host, Vicki Pets Henderson. Welcome to My Journey of Faith Radio. I hope you're all having a good week. I don't know about where you live, but it's been terribly windy here. I've had several casualties from the wind. My ceiling fan literally blew off and landed on my porch, nearly landed on my porch swing. And so it's been sort of a windy week, both outside as well as inside. I've just sort of had one of those weeks. So I hope that you are having a good week. I'm really excited about my guest today. I have with me today Duranda Golden. Welcome. Thank you. Duranda is a very special person to me. She is a very beautiful lady, both inside and out, and everyone that knows her admires her faith and admires her strength. And I just want to read this verse. It's out of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, and it says, We were completely overwhelmed beyond our strength, so that we even despaired of life. Indeed, we personally had a death sentence within ourselves, so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead." So, Duranda, just tell us a little bit about your story, because I do believe, in a lot of ways, you got a death sentence. I really did get a death sentence. In 2010, I was diagnosed with stage 4 melanoma cancer, and it had metastasized to my lung. Um, During that time, after I had my surgery, when I woke up, the doctor had told me that it went to my lung, and he went through what procedures I guess they would do and he told me that I would probably not make it within a year Mm. and so of course I thank the Lord for protecting my mind and Dr. Henderson you know you are my hero (laughs) if it wasn't for you and the Lord and many others praying for me I would not be here. Well I really feel honored that I have been on this journey with you from the very beginning because you have I have. I have been with you and with your (laughs) husband, Jason, and y'all have blessed me in so many ways at the way that you have faced this situation. Now, how old were you when you were diagnosed? Okay, it was five years ago, so I was 34 when I was diagnosed. And what is the survival rate normally for stage 4 melanoma? Do you know? Um, I do not know offhand. I can't tell you, but he told me um, I had less than a year to live, and then I went through, I went to MD Anderson in Houston, Texas. And that I did biochemotherapy there, which is a very intense chemo. And there they told me that I should make it, but there's a chance that if I was here, if it would come back, it would come back within a year. And it, I would be, there's a 15% chance I would still be here in five years. Wow. So wow. the scripture that I love to live by was Psalms 118.17. And it says, I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. And I'm so thankful for that verse because he did protect me and he did do a miracle basically in my life. Absolutely. You are a walking miracle. (laughs) I mean, because then I was also told that if it went to my brain, then I would have less than five months to live. And in 2011, the melanoma did metastasize to my lung, my brain and I had brain surgery at that time so and I remember you tell me one time it was no walk in the park no not at all mm. um you know it's tough you go through things and people say I don't know how you do it and at that time I can't explain it it was just the peace of God and I, I heard people say that all the time it's the peace of God that passes all understanding but in that moment in my life that's exactly what it was, the peace of God. And I cannot, under, I don't even, I can't comprehend how I was not stressed out. And I understand just, completely. And I remember just admiring your strength. <clears throat> Everybody that I that I know that knows you admires your strength, admires your strength. Oh, she's so strong. And <sighs> and um, and you had a lot to live for. I did have a lot to live <laughs> you for. Have I had three time, boys. <laughs> yes, I had three boys. They are now 16, 13, and 12. But... You know, I had two choices at that time when I was told that I wasn't going to make it past a year. I could either give up or I could get up every day, live the best life I could live, and I was going to make it. I was determined to live, make it for my boys. And, you know, really none of us knows what tomorrow brings. No. We don't. We should live every day that way, mm-hmm. everyone. That should be a lesson for everyone because 
I know, you know, I was the same way as far as my life was going one way one day, and oh, then yeah. the next day, a lot of things were over. Oh, yeah. And a lot of things, if I had not done them, I did not have another opportunity to do them. So I think exactly. it's a lesson for everyone just to make the most of the day. Mm -hmm. And I remember after I got very sick, I sent you a message, and I said, I always admired your strength. <laughs> but now I know it was not no, you. It, was it came not from me. the Lord. And that's it. People would say, well, how are you so strong? And it did not come from me. It really didn't. Because there's no way I could do that. Um, I could walk through this valley. It's what I call it. There's no way I could walk through that valley by myself. Absolutely. So I'm thankful for the strength that God gave me and my family. Well, and I wanted to ask you about that. Tell me what all kinds of support you have. Mm -hmm. I know the community has been oh, yes. extremely supportive. And yes. I've heard people say, you know, Dorana had brain surgery. She put a scarf on her when she was out at the baseball field <laughs> watching her boys play. I was actually the next day after I got home from the airport, my boys were playing in a baseball tournament. And my boys are everything to me. I love my boys and I want to support them. And that's one of the things I wanted to be there, there for them in everything. Um, but as far as the community, did they help? Yes. The community, they did fundraisers for us. They prayed for us. They brought food. The churches were just amazing how they stepped in. My mom and my mother-in-law, I'm so thankful for them. They made life as normal as possible for my boys. So when Jason and I had to go to Texas, they came in, they stayed at our house, they got them to the ball practice, whatever they needed to do. And so I'm so thankful for them. Well, and I see a really sweet relationship between you and Jason. <laughs> I remember him calling me oh, yes. after the doctor told you you uh -huh. had just a few months to live. He yeah. called me and he said, you got to do something. Uh -huh. And I'm like, well, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And he said, no, you have to find someone to help us. Yes. And it was really kind of a neat way that that came about to mm -hmm. get you into MD Oh, Anderson. yeah. But he was the one that was always pushing yes. to do more, to do more, yes. to do more. And I thought that was so precious that he cared so deeply for mm -hmm. you that he came along beside you and walked through all this with you. Oh, yes. God definitely you. put him in my path, and I'm so thankful for that. And he's had so. to miss a lot of work. He has missed a lot of work, but they have been great. They've worked with him, and, you know, God works in mysterious ways because when I found out that I was going to have to go to Houston, say, every three months, it just so happened, and I say that with quotations, it so happened that he got Houston into his area that he was over to work in. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that cool? So, so he was able to work while you were in the hospital. He was having to work while he, he was in the hospital. Well, I was in the hospital, but yet he was still getting paid because that God just, provided. You that know, just the it's Lord's just, provision. Yes, it is. And that's one of those examples, too, I think, when something like this happens, you start worrying. Yes. What are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about that? Mm -hmm. And God's saying, you're going to trust me, mm -hmm. and I'm going to show you mighty things. Yes. I am going to show yes. you mighty things. Yes. That is really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So what about the church? I know your church has oh, been supported, but I heard you say churches. Yes, there's been several churches. My church, um, First Assembly, is um, where we attended at the time, and oh my goodness, they supported us tremendously as far as bringing foods and praying and just... Um, they had a golf tournament for me, and they were a big supporter of that. And Oh, that's fun. Yeah, and different churches. I mean, even people I didn't even know would call me and say, Hey, um, we're praying for you, and can I bring this over? Do you have any needs? Can I pick up your kids? I mean, you know, just churches. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody in the community, people I didn't even know was supporting, and I'm so thankful for It's that. just that body of Christ, mm -hmm. and I have often said, how do people live without mm -hmm. that? When when tragedy strikes of any kind, what do you do without that support network? And you really have to be plugged in in advance. Exactly. I think that's so important uh, for anyone that's listening. If you're not an active member of a church or part of a community group or a small group, I would just encourage you Someday, mm -hmm. you're going to need help. They say, you know, when two are better than one because if one falls down, there's someone there to help them up. And if you're kind of doing life by yourself, I think you're at risk for I think so. really going through some tough, tough times. And I know this community and the churches have, have ministered to me that way, too. And, and people just, people you would not expect. Exactly. People, I think, I'm convicted because I think, well, I wouldn't have called them mm -hmm. and offered to do that. Right, right. I'm the same way. I mean, I'm guilty before. I think I 
I'm better now because before I would think, oh, someone will take care of that. And so now I think I'm more aware mm-hmm. of it takes everybody. And it's not just a church. I mean, in the community, we are the church. So it takes all of the churches right. together. We're all the body of Christ. And I think that's something we have uniquely in this community, the cooperation mm-hmm. between the different churches and the different denominations. Right. And honestly, that's one of the things that attracted me to this town. Yeah. I think it's kind of a little bit unique, and it's a great model mm-hmm. for other places. Is there anything unique that anybody did to minister to you? I know I've had several, you know, I had someone help decorate my house for Christmas. I had... Um, People take the trash to the street oh, yeah. and just things that you don't think about. We always think about taking meals. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, meals. And then I even had um, our life group, had they paid to have my house cleaned. And I was so thankful for that. That was just such a big thing because there was days, which my mom and mother-in-law were great, and they stayed and helped as much as I need them. But they would, the life group paid, and it was so nice for someone just to come in, and I didn't have to worry about, because I like a clean house. That's a that's big with me. And when you have three boys, that's <laughs> probably is, not an easy task. It is a chore. <laughs> but that was just so helpful to me. That's just me. to have that. And mm-hmm. I like that when people sort of start thinking outside yeah. the box, you know, what, what does she really mm-hmm. need? Not, you know, not necessarily a meal every night. Yes. But. And then two of my very best friends, Jennifer Atchison and Jay Sabab, they, um, made little note cards for me so I would take them and I still have them with me actually it's just a flip chart of different verses their favorite verses and just verses they thought would minister to me and then they did the same thing their kids made the same flip chart for my kids so all three of my boys have a flip chart oh wow and then I have the flip chart and so they could just read through those and I keep mine in my purse all the time because you never know when you're going to need that scripture that is really a neat mm-hmm. idea. I like that. I like yeah. that a lot. Have you seen your boys grow spiritually through all this? I have. And, you know, at times I would think, okay, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? You know, what are you trying to teach my boys? And then I felt like, oh, I know one day they're just going to, one day they're going to be able to see someone going through a trial and they're going to say, you know what? My mom was not giving, given any chance to live and she made it through God. And I can just tell that, yeah, God's working through them, and they're going to be able to show. Absolutely. I remember sending you a verse, and um, I think it's still out of 2 Corinthians 1, where it says that he comforts us in all our afflictions so that we might be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Mm -hmm. And I think so many times, unless you've been there, you can't really help someone. And so can you think of any ways that God has made that verse? (sighs) Well, I mean, you know, just another thing we were talking about earlier was just special things people have done. And there would be days that I would just be feeling so bad. And all of a sudden, I would just get a text from someone. And it would be exactly what I needed, exactly what I was going through. Um, You know, God will give you strength and just different verses that I needed at that time. And nobody knew, but God knew. And God was working through people. So I had that experience as well. I would get the same verse mm-hmm. from, from random people. people. <laughs> and, you know, it's like some, like Psalm 3-3. Yeah. I remember two different people sent me Psalm 3-3 on the same day. I'm like, only God Yeah, only can God do knows. that. Yeah. I remember one morning I had spent a lot of times in Lamentations. Mm-hmm. And um, just talking about joy coming in the morning. And, mm-hmm. and um and that afternoon, that very afternoon, someone sent me a card. Yeah. And it had the same verse. Like, I got to yes. where I expected that. Uh-huh. It's like, okay, God does this yeah. for me. It made me feel special. Yeah. <laughs> and I had, I probably got thousands of cards, and I still have those, and I look through them every once in a while. Just people lifting you up, and that was something neat that I got. And like I said before, people I didn't even know. And then my cousin set up a Facebook page, Prayer for Dorinda, and there's people from different states. And they said, I heard your story through, you know, someone else. And so I've got to call some, some people have asked me to call others and just kind of tell them the road that I went through. And so I've got to minister to people going through melanoma, actually. Specifically. Specifically. That's neat. So that's pretty neat. That's neat because their doctors aren't giving them any hope. Exactly. And you are a living hope. I'm a living (laughs) testimony of God. You definitely are. That is neat. That is neat. Because he does, he gives you opportunities, I think, to use what you've been through. He says, our light and momentary troubles are 
are achieving for us an eternal glory that outweighs them all. Mm -hmm. And so I just envision that someday we'll be in heaven. Oh, yeah. And and you'll meet people that you didn't ever oh, meet yeah. on this earth that'll say, your story uh -huh. helped me so much. Yeah. And another scripture that I really, really loved was Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And just giving me that hope, I mean, that really ministered to me. Because I thought, you know, this isn't it. But God's got more for me. I don't know what, but God's got more for me. So, And I think that the most devastating thing to lose would be your hope. Mm -hmm. You know, you see people who have no hope. Mm -hmm. And without the Lord, you would have had right. no hope. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Based on what the doctors were telling uh -huh. you, you had no hope. Right. For you or your family. Yeah. Mm. And even you, I mean, you, you didn't even know how you ministered to me, I don't think when I was going through that, but there would be times, and I know Jason was crying for you for help. I remember he told, I remember my mom and them telling me the night that he found out that they weren't giving me any hope to live, that I only had a certain amount of time, him calling you and asking you for help, help me do this. And, you know, God just kind of worked that all out with um, Karen Buchanan and y'all being in the same Yeah, that's an interesting story because, you know, he was, he was just desperate. He was mm -hmm. like, you have to find somebody to help. And I'm like, I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know where she needs to go. And then, you know, it was just sort of one thing connected to another thing. And she had a cousin and uh -huh. the cousin did research in melanoma yeah. and she knew somebody didn't be interested in and they called yeah we called them and then we were able to get you in pretty fast uh, yeah because they said the melanoma department usually takes six months to a year to get in at md anderson and i was in this happened in june and i was at md anderson on july 1st wow so i mean that just and i had plenty of time to heal from my surgery and it was just perfect timing god's timing you know, it's easy to, to see that looking back. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder to see it looking forward. When but, you're going through. But the Bible says, you know, it's not faith mm -hmm. if we can see it. Mm -hmm. We have to hope in what we can't see. And that's yeah. hard. I, and I would encourage anyone that's listening that's facing a difficult situation to just keep your eyes focused on the Lord and trust Him. And trust mm -hmm. that He has good plans for you. And trust that He's going to provide even when the facts oh, yeah. seem contrary to mm -hmm. that. Because... For you, the facts definitely. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Another thing I've talked to people um, who have experienced either cancer or something else is they talk about the nearness of the Lord, the, the closeness that they feel. Mm -hmm. Did you experience that? I did. I mean, there was times, like I said, you know, days I would be having a bad day, and it was like I could still feel God's spirit with me. I mean, don't get me wrong. There was times I thought, okay, God, where are you? I need you right now. And it was like my prayers weren't going past the roof, you know. But that's when God used others, like I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. to send me a text or to send me, hey, I'm praying for you today. And So, yeah. I mean, I, I can't explain it. Again, it's just so surreal to me. I it, can't explain. And the, the Bible says that. Peace I and know. Peace and understanding. Yes. And I know what you're talking about. I, there were times when I thought, I can't pray. Yeah. I cannot yeah. even pray. Mm -hmm. And somebody stood in the gap for me. Mm -hmm. Always. Someone, yeah. the Lord provided someone to stand in the gap. And, and like I said, I got to where I just expected it. And so by trusting him and him proving himself faithful, I was able to trust him more. Right. And that's the way it is in your walk. Mm -hmm. With the Lord, the longer you walk with him, the more I think you see his faithfulness and then the more you are able to trust him. Yeah. And others see that. And it's such a testimony to other people to look at you and what you've been through and say, wow, God did something big. Yeah. I mean, God did something big. And I'm so thankful for that. Last week, I think I posted on my Facebook page because I was having a bad hair day because you could see my scar where I had had the brain surgery. And I try my best always to cover that up because I didn't want, I never going through my treatments and that kind of thing with cancer. I didn't want people to say, oh, that's Dorinda. She looks sick. And I did never want that. And I didn't want to draw attention, I guess, if I had surgery or something. So that was always a big thing to me. And I thank God because even now I have people say, you weren't supposed to live. You would never know that by looking at you. And I just thank God for that because that was a big And you did always look fantastic. <laughs> thank you. I didn't always feel fantastic. I know, you I know. know you, you just, 
you have to do what you have to you do. Just get up and you, you get, get dressed and, and you put one foot exactly. in front of the other and and what else are you gonna do? Some days slower than others, but hey, <laughs> sometimes you drag one foot in front of the other. <laughs> That's, That's for sure. Right. Well, I think there's something special about a very dependent relationship on the Lord. Oh yeah. When you're at your lowest mm-hmm. and you're just like, I can't do this yeah. without you. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And I was blessed to grow up. Um, my dad was a pastor, and so I grew up in church. So I had a lot of that foundation. And I'm thankful that I had those words in my heart because if not, I don't know what I would do. I, I don't know what people do no. in that situation. And I think it's important that you're planting those words in your kids' hearts. Mm-hmm. You know, you're preparing them for anything that, that life might bring. Mm-hmm. So... When did you have your last checkup? Um, I was there last week, actually. I had my last checkup, and I had a CT scan and MRI. And I've been having to go every three months. And this time, they're giving me four months, so I don't have to go to May. So I'm like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that's that's big, big progress. So yes. how long has it been since you had any recurrences or treatments? Or? February of last year, I had another spot come on my brain. And so I had gamma knife radiation. Then I have had surgeries, as you know, but listeners don't know. I've had a surgery every year since 2010, um, except for 2013. I had two surgeries, so um, that's when I've been on and off of the chemo and that kind of thing. But I had the gamma and I radiation last February. So total, Again. how many recurrences have you had? Oh, goodness. Let me see. I have had right lung. They took 10% of my right lung the very first time. Um, this was a neat story because I had just started singing with some girls and they had told me that they thought they saw a spot in my left lung. And I kept thinking, no, God, please, I don't want that to, I don't want them to have to take any more of my lung because they had told me they would have to take at least 25% of my left lung. So a neat little story is I prayed, God, I don't care what you have to do. Please don't let them have to take my lung. And I know that sounds silly to some people, but I, that's how I prayed. And when they when I woke up from surgery, they said, Dorinda, we can't explain it because it was in there. It just looks like someone popped that out, and it was sitting back behind your lung. And so they were able to get it without taking any of my lungs. Without any of it. Without any of it. I'm like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> so, they, so it went to my right lung, my left lung. I've had brain surgery and three different gamma knife radiation treatments on my brain, um, on my back spine. I've had several reoccurrences. But and chemo. And, and the, chemo. And but through chemo. it all, I mean, God's been faithful. Absolutely. And this is this the longest you've gone without this a This is the longest. That's a year. That's yes, a big I know. Deal. That's a big thing. That's so, a really big deal. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm very excited about that. So do you get apprehensive when you go for your appointments? You know, people ask me that a lot. I do, but then again, I can't explain it because God just gives me a peace. And it's kind of what you do now. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind kinda, of yeah. woven into the fabric yes. of your life and your story. Yeah, now. and it, you know, I kind of felt bad for a little while because it was every time we were coming back, it was like we were having to tell the boys because we were always open and honest with the boys. And sometimes someone might leak it out on Facebook before we got to tell our boys, and I wasn't happy about that, but. Um, we were always open and honest with them, and um, I forgot where I was going with that. Well, it's been a big struggle that. for them. Well, what it has been, I kind of started feeling bad because it was kind of like it was the normal for them. Mom would come back, well, Mom's going to have another surgery, or Mom's going to have to start chemo, and I thought, I don't want that to be normal for them, mm-hmm. so I just really had to pray about that because... You know, that is a struggle. It is, and, it, and it's not the childhood you want for your kids, Yeah. but then you have to just trust that the Lord's going to do something yes, big with that. Exactly, and I know there's a plan, and I know He has a plan. I just wish, sometimes I wish I could see, okay, God, what's your big plan? Yeah. And I know we can't do that. <laughs> Absolutely, though. That would, that would but, definitely make things better. Yes, but anyway, it's a struggle sometimes, but well, I'm in sure the midst it of it all, God's there. And the verse, the verse that I wanted to close with, just I think that describes you, and just be thinking about if you have anything else that you want to share with us. But it's again out of Second Corinthians chapter one, it's verse twenty-one. It says, "Now it is God who strengthens us with mm-hmm. you in Christ and has anointed us." 
And again, it's just it, we think it's an inner strength when we see it in someone else, and it is, but it comes from God. That's and our exactly dependence right. on Him, our weakness, is what makes us mm-hmm. strong when we depend on Him. His power is perfected in our weakness, and that that's what I see in you in such a new way since I've struggled with my own health issues. Yeah, I mean, and that's it. When I'm weak, He is strong. And you're reflecting his glory. When I look at you, I'm I'm not going, oh, Duranda's such a wonderful, strong person, which you are, and I love you dearly. But I, that's not what I want. <laughs> but when I look at you, I think, I go, man, God is so faithful. Well, that's and that's what I want. When I see people, I want them to say, wow, God. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's what I say every day when I wake up. I'm thankful every day I wake up, and I say, wow. God, you're awesome. Thank you. And that's me. And I think that that spirit of gratefulness and that willingness to sacrifice praise helps us. Mm-hmm. I know at my lowest times, I literally would just do that as an exercise. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be thankful. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show gratitude. And of course, you sing. I can't sing. But I've heard you have a beautiful <laughs> voice, and I know you sing. And so I know you are, through this all, you have praised the Lord. Mm-hmm. And that strengthens you. Yeah. I mean, that's all you can do. when. You know, when you can't do anything else, just stand. And I would just stand a lot of times. And I would just say, okay, God, here I am. And, you know, a lot of times it's not even talking. It's in the quiet time Mm -hmm. that God, you just let God speak to you. Because I think we all struggle with that sometimes. We're always wanting, wanting, wanting. We're always, you know, praying, praying, praying. But we've got to stop and be still and just listen. The Lord taught me that the hard way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I was never still and never listening. and. The sweetest times I had with the Lord is just exactly what you're talking about, mm-hmm. where he just spoke to me. Mm-hmm. And and the the worse I was physically or the weaker I was, even spiritually, the stronger he was there. Yeah. His presence was there. Yeah, and so exactly that's right. really neat. Whether it was just walking outside and seeing mm-hmm. the stars and, you know, or like you said, text coming. Yeah. That was just what you needed at the right yeah. moment. So that confirmation exactly I'm here I'm in control of every detail just trust me no matter mm-hmm. what yeah and you know my boys I remember them coming in and they'd give me a big hug and they'd say I'm proud of you mom and that just meant the oh, world yeah. to me and I thought it's not me you know it's never been me it's God and so what a wonderful life lesson well, I can't, can't wait to a see life lesson. I mean I know God's got big plans for them that's he what does. I'm excited for because I know them seeing this and going through this God's got to have a plan absolutely that is so neat. well thank you so much for sharing thank your you story for having me and I hope I'm that getting everyone teary-eyed on you, sorry. <laughs> well I just you're a very special person to me. like I said you're beautiful inside and out and I hope your story encourages a lot of people who may be facing a hopeless situation Mm -hmm. that we always have hope in an eternal God who loves us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.